Hello, and welcome to Startup Stories with Scaleway, where we explore cutting edge startups around the world and how they leverage cloud computing technologies. I am your host, Ethan Pierce. Today's guest is Céline Delegere, founder of Ava Engines, a French startup bridging the worlds of fashion and artificial intelligence to simplify the fashion design process. Welcome, Céline. Hi, Ethan. Nice to be here. It's great to have you. And I'm super excited for our discussion about how you are applying technology to the fashion world and your experience in that space. Uh, but maybe to give our audience some context to start off with, I was, I'd like to hear your 30 to 60 second elevator pitch. You know, just tell us what you do, uh, short version, at Ava Engines. Sure. At Eva Engines, we simplify the fashion design process. With us, you can go from a sketch to a 2D realistic image in less than 60 seconds, which reduces costs and time and help brands, fashion brands, to become more sustainable. Well, that's, that's super interesting. It's... Um... Uh, the way you just pitched it makes me think a little bit of about how people use Figma now to do so much design work in their browser and how that's become such a big piece of helping designers make better designs by using a powerful tool. So I'm excited to listen to, to hear a little bit about how the technology that you use to do what you do. But before we get into that, I'm wondering about the backstory because it's always fun to hear about where this idea came from, who the founders are, why this kind of happened. You know, any interesting anecdotes on creating the company? Just what brought you to Ava Engines? Yeah, so actually that's a fun story because I was studying math and AI in Paris in a university called Dauphine and Lemine Paris Tech. And at that time, I felt like I needed a student job. And I was wondering what I could do as a student job, and I ended up uh, being a fashion model. <laughs> so actually, uh, I didn't expect at all to, to learn how the fashion world is working, but in a few months, I became an international fashion model with the biggest um, agency called the IMG Models, probably you know it. Mm -hmm. So I arrived on the, the fashion weeks, in the biggest city of the world, uh, so New York, London, Paris, Milan, Tokyo, and I was working with the biggest high fashion brands like Hermes, Victoria Beckham, and other brands. It was an incredible uh, experience. And actually, at the same time, I was still a student because it was a student job, even if it was uh, taking a lot of time. So I was doing the, the, the both, both things at the same time. So to give you an, an idea about it, I had like exams, then I had fashion weeks, then I was back to university. I had I was back to university and I was thinking, wow, that's really chill <laughs> comparing to fashion weeks. Anyway, so that was a great time because I got to really understand how fashion is working from the real beginning of the creation of the clothes. So I was seeing some designers from high fashion brands, how they are designing clothes. And it was really interesting because I was very curious about it. And I was also on the runway shows and on the, um, the shooting. So I really got to see how it's working. And it was really a world really far away from AI because I was studying AI at the same time. And it got me to, to think and to realize that the fashion industry is now changing a lot and needs to change a lot. And I wanted to really take action and be part of this transformation. I, I didn't really know at that time what it would mean for me. And after a few years, I realized that I had a great tool that I learned uh, in university and also by myself, which was AI. And I decided to take action and to create my own company with uh, David, my co-founder, and to launch a startup, which is called Eva Engine. So in, in 2019, with my co-founder David, we launched Eva Engines, and we really want to help fashion brands uh, to transform in a more sustainable and digital way with our powerful AI solutions. So that's our mission. And actually the comparison with Figma is very interesting because I didn't see it before, but in the way that we are designing and we design our software, which is 
a communication tool between the designers, it looks like it's really similar to it in, in some ways. <laughs> Well, it's it's a you know it's a fascinating uh, idea to think about. Um, well, al already it's not the image that we have of of a model sitting on a shoot reading her math and AI textbooks, and so I think that that's already fantastic. Um, you know, to maybe break down some of our our stereotypes and models uh, uh, around that idea, and so. Um, that's already, you know, a super cool thing to imagine um, you in that environment, at, at thinking about how you could apply what you were learning at school to this new space, and then going and creating a company around that. So I, I know that you're the CEO and not the CTO. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, David is, is the technology, you know, uh, explainer potentially on some of this, but I, I would like to hear a little bit more about the high level technology that you're using in your service and how that works in order to accomplish uh, um, the solution, to build the solution that, that you mentioned around helping designers uh, be more efficient and create a more sustainable uh, uh, idea of fashion. So um, just on a high level then, what, what is the technology behind uh, uh, Ava Engines? Yeah, sure. So um, to give you a little bit of context, because I, I guess that um, not all of you probably know about the, the fashion world, how it works. So to create um, a product, uh, there are many steps. And actually today the workflow is quite complex. So there is a first brief with the creative teams. And uh, until the product launch, there are many, many back and forth between different teams. It takes a lot of time. And actually, why? It's because um, they they do not directly produce the, the final product ready to be launched, but they produce about five prototypes, physical prototypes, for each product which will be launched. So that means that without our solution, uh, brands were producing for each product launch five physical prototypes. What you need to know is that one physical prototype um, takes about one or two weeks to be produced, and it's a huge cost. Uh, so the global cost for all the, the prototypes, uh, only for the prototypes, is around six to eight billion dollars. So it's huge, and it's a huge waste of fabric because all, uh, all these prototypes end up uh, discarded in the trash. So that's huge. And so our idea with Eva Engines is to allow um, the creative teams and the, and the fashion teams to, um, to go from a sketch, so from the product sketch that they have in mind, to um, 2D realistic renderings instantly. So they can really take some decisions at a very early stage of the creation process. And that's huge because uh, it helps to it helps brand to reduce their uh, physical prototypes. So um, with us, you can just uh, reduce your physical prototypes, and also uh, to to become more productive and to uh, to shorten their time to market and to avoid the very complex workflow. And actually, what we are using as a technology is called generative AI. So it's a very new technology. Um, the idea, so I was saying, is to go from a sketch to a realistic 2D image. And this is made with our technology called GANS, Generative AI. So we train basically neural networks uh, to go from a sketch to a realistic image. And um, the advantages of this technology is that it's super scalable. It's very easy to use. And um, it generates uh, very high uh, real resolution images. So that's huge. And for today, it's very, very new. It's, uh, it has less than uh, five years, the technology. And we are uh, one of the first companies to use this kind of technology. And the transformation will be huge in fashion, but not only in fashion, also in many different industries, I'm sure. So. Uh, that already gives us kind of one idea of how you distinguish yourself from your competition, given that this technology is new and, and is, is just beginning to be applied to lots of different um, spaces, but specifically to fashion. 
but I'm curious as to other ways that you would would identify Ava Engines as being distinct from its competitors, um, potentially competitors trying to do what you're doing by creating efficiency or, or, or 3D modeling or 2D modeling or rendering, but also potentially non-tech companies that, that are doing this in a different way or an older way. Like, how would you set Ava Engines apart from your competition? So, um, as of today, we are quite unique in our uh, positioning because a lot of AI startups, they are uh, targeting the marketing side of the products. I mean that they are using generative AI to create and uh, produce some um, pictures of the clothes, but to market and to commercial them, uh, commercialize the clothes. So it's a little different and we are targeting the market in a different way. Plus, we arrive really at the beginning of the process. And then we have also another kind of competitors. Um, so it's companies creating software to, for designers so they can create 3D renderings um, by doing 3D design. And this is a new technology also disrupting the physical prototypes. Uh, I guess you probably heard about it, but it's quite difficult to use uh for designers why because designers they they are not used to um to design in 3d they usually uh design sketch and they uh, they don't feel like technology it's quite rare <laughs> it's quite rare for designers uh to enjoy technology and 3d design so the big difference with our competitors um, using 3D design is that uh, we we want to be very easy to use for every designer and they just have to work as they usually work. So, I mean, they just have to sketch uh, their produce and then it can be used by our platform. I would think that that you know, apart from the sketching, this this is also you know, like you mentioned, that potentially these kind of designers are not not as technology um, uh, friendly in the sense that, for me, I'd imagine this is all about you know having your hands in the fabrics and the materials and really experimenting and and then then you have this design process of of of, of drawing things, but but it's from from an, someone who doesn't under, really know the industry that well it sounds like a a creative art where people really are also in a very physical space working and making these 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 designs so taking that into a digital space if the tools are too complex uh, or too difficult to use i would imagine is a pretty significant block for those designers so the fact that you've built something that pretty much takes a flat you know 2d design and does the work for them um, provides them with the technology benefit without actually making them do the technology uh, in, a, in, in a way that they aren't really used to, if I understand correctly. Yeah, definitely. And uh, a very big part of the work for a creative person uh, is, uh, is to go from their idea to communicate their idea. So our tool is really designed for that. So they can, uh, it can be very easy for them to use and also they can express themselves and their ideas through our platform. So uh, I think it would be clear if I was listening to this and I was in the fashion world, probably that I should call you uh, if I, you know, depending on what kind of activity I have as a designer in a, in a fashion house. But, but from your perspective, what kind of companies, if they're curious about this, should reach out to you to talk about what, um, how you can help them solve these problems? Yeah, so we are, um, we are targeting uh, innovative fashion brands and with big volumes because I think our solution will be first used and very helpful for companies with a lot of volumes. Um, so we are first targeting this kind of company, but um, we th really think that our tool will be used by every kind of fashion companies in the future too. <laughs> What I'm wondering too, if you know, you, you mentioned this huge number, six to eight billion dollars of of, of uh, money spent on fabric and, and all the resources in order to make the five examples of each design. 
and so I'm thinking that that's something that's really out of reach for most creators that don't have access to that kind of capital to, to be making lots of things in fashion. I'm wondering if a tool like yours is also going to be really useful in the creator economy that we see now where people who are starting small businesses around creative arts, whatever that might be, uh, would be able to be more efficient and create even better, maybe more competitive designs um, with large fashion houses, but without having had all of the the same potentially infrastructure in terms of like an atelier with all of the resources and 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 tools and access to all the different fabrics and things like that before they make uh, a prototype. I'm, I'm guessing that this could be something that's useful, not just to big fashion houses, but even to eventually to small creators. Yeah, I really hope that in the in the future, it will also help uh, creators uh, to go for more fashion on demand, probably because with our renderings, probably they could um, directly sell on fashion on demand in the future. So I really ho hope it will, uh, and I really think also that it will help fashion to, to go this direction, to this direction. Well, I love the sustainability idea of helping this, not just with the, on the efficiency side, but to, to be able to reduce waste. And I, I think that for me, the interesting thing around fashion uh, on demand and, and, and the fast fashion uh, concept as well is, Right now, some of the fast fashion is actually wasteful because of the ways that it, it does things. But I think in the end, the efficiency there could even could become more about sustainability because we're, you're not overproducing the wrong things. You're able to produce in smaller quantities. And I think tools like yours that allow people to design faster and have a better idea of what it is the actual end product will look like just overall means that we can create, uh, that, that creators can create more specific uh, creations with a lot less waste. I think that sustainability side of this is is really fascinating and, and, and super important in the, the world that we live in now. Yeah, I really think, uh, so when I was working as a fashion model, I really realized that fashion needs uh, to start a deep transformation also because uh, it's uh, one of the most polluting industry and that there is uh, there is a lot of change to be done uh, on the sustainability parts of the fashion. I think many brands right now, they already realize it and they are taking action for it. So it's really the time to, to act and to be there <laughs> to offer them new new way of uh, designing and new way of working so they can go further into the sustainability. And so in the context of um, your technology and, and the things that you do, and we talk about cloud computing infrastructure. So you're an AI company. Uh, this is obviously the Startup with Scaleways um, um, podcast. And so in, in your partnership with a startup program like, like Scaleways and, and around your cloud computing infrastructure, what are... What are the needs of a company like Ava Engines in order to uh, build your solution and to scale it up? Yeah, so actually, uh, cloud computing for us is key. And uh, building this partnership for, for us is very important. Why? Because uh, we have a huge infrastructure. We need to do a lot of uh, cloud computing for the research part to build our models. And then also to uh, develop an infrastructure to put all our model into production. So for us, cloud computing is uh, the key. So we have no other uh, solution than uh, using uh, cloud computing. And uh, for us, uh, building this partnership is a great uh, thing for the future. So uh, today we ha are finalizing our V1. We already have a first MVP in production. And basically what we do is that we are training uh, some deep learning models on uh, cloud uh, computing infrastructure. And we are also building our production infrastructure for our V1. And we are all uh, we are doing all of that on scale web platforms. So uh, it's key for us to, to, to build this partnership. Well, that's and great to hear. Actually, yeah. yeah. Are, sorry. sorry, please go ahead. No, we are very happy to be in, to, uh, in the Scaleway community because it's very important also to have some relationships with other startups and to, to build some um, communi community about uh, how we build this very complex infrastructure and 
also to communicate about that. So we are very happy to be part of it. Well, I know they're definitely glad to have you, and, and this is it's such a fascinating fascinating topic, um, um, merging technology and AI with with something uh, like the fashion industry, and and I think it's really interesting too to identify that that you need significant technology resources for your research and development, not just for the production product and service that you're that you know you're, you'll be commercializing to your clients. So, you know, that that does, you know, that that is the amazing thing about these kind of cloud computing resource companies now is is that you're able to build a startup. Um, I've been around long enough to know how expensive things used to be, uh, you know, in terms of renting servers and even just the hard drives for things and stuff that were just ridiculous in terms of pricing, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And today you're able to leverage incredible power. Um, and for both the R and D side, uh, like you're saying, but also the production side, and, and on a startup level, the ability to have access to that um, um, is is probably something that would mean that you know even just a few years ago you wouldn't have been able to create a company like Ava Engines without this kind of resource. So I think it's fascinating to hear your journey and how you've kind of come along through that, and and excited to hear that your MVP is is done, and and now you're about ready to. Uh, uh, reach out with your V1 and start working on on that with clients. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Actually, for a company like us, it would be impossible to develop um, all the uh, to create all the servers internally because uh, only for one uh, model training we need one GPU and one machine. So we cannot ju we can just not have it uh, at our office. So yeah, it's not our core business. So it's very important to for us to build the technology with. A partner. I think that's a great thing to highlight at the kind of closing up of our of our of our podcast here is that this has enabled you to be able to leverage the technology without having to be an infrastructure company. You don't have to build all this on your own at your office or in your own space. You're able to leverage um, somebody else's infrastructure uh, that is put in service for this purpose, but you understand how to leverage it. You just don't have to go into the expense and and the, the difficulty of building that. I think that's a great point to highlight, uh, especially mm -hmm. uh, again, when we talk about startups and operating on you know potentially lean means and wanting to be very efficient with the resources that you have while you're building up the beginning of a project. You mentioned V1 is 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 done and, and the MVP, you're, you're pretty much just, you know, you're right there for all of this. What are the next big steps for Ava Engine? What's in the pipeline, maybe for the next, say, six months, year, year and a half? Yeah, so actually, we launched our first MVP in January. Uh, so it's a, it's a platform, an online platform um, in production where you can uh, directly use uh, some of our neural networks. And now we are working with some uh, partners, uh, some corporate partners to build our V1. We are uh, doing some beta tests. So our next um, our next step is to raise funds to hire more people and also to to build uh, our technology and to have our first recurring clients. So that's our next step in the in the next month. That's awesome. Well, I look forward to hearing uh, amazing things. Uh, thank you for this discussion, Celine. I wish you all of the best in scaling up Ava Engines. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad that I was here this morning and uh, hope to see you soon. Yes, that, that's well, yeah, we're looking forward to the time we can go have a coffee and, and, and chat about this in real life. And yeah. uh, that, that will be great. Thank you for joining us uh, for this episode of Startup Stories with Scaleway. Uh, if you are a startup that uses cloud computing resources, be sure to check out Scaleway's startup program at scaleway.com. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform, and check out all of the previous episodes of the podcast. And again, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.